We're going to be making a bag today and I'm so excited about it. It's the Bestie Bag from Blackbird Fabrics and I've made several of them at this point. The pattern is really great, easy to follow, but sometimes it's nice to see like visually how it all comes together. So we're gonna walk through it today. One thing I really love about this pattern is that it comes with multiple different options for like the size of your bag and the different straps you can use and the different pockets you can do. So you can really like customize exactly what you want your bag to be. So today we are doing the medium version with a self strap on a slider. So you can do a medium version, a large version with or without a pleat. Um, for the strap, you could do the self strap, which is what we're doing, which just means we're making the strap out of the fabric of the bag. Um, you can also do nylon webbing for the strap, which is this like black nylon material. Um, we also need a zipper, which I have here. Blackbird has zippers. Um, they also have sliders, which are these little plastic pieces to like slide your strap through. And Blackbird has kits with all this stuff. If you want just like an easy peasy, I want to make the bag. I want to pick my fabric from Blackbird. I want to get all of my notions from Blackbird. You can get it all in one place and that's really, really handy. You can also buy all this other stuff separately at fabric stores or Amazon or wherever. Um, in fact, this giant roll of nylon I got on Amazon just because I do make a lot of bags. So I'll link this webbing um, and I'll also link all of Blackbird's like kits and fabrics and all that stuff because it's super handy that they have all of that available. So that's the version we're doing. And then of course for fabrics, I am using Blackbird fabric and I'm so excited about the fabric I got. It's this really, really pretty like greenish corduroy. The color is pickle. <laughs> and I'll link this exact fabric in there as well. But I've been wanting this. I feel like it's a really good like neutral color, even though it's a little bit more fun and out of the box. I tend to just get everything in like black. And so I wanted to branch out from that, but still be somewhat neutral. So very excited about this fabric. And then for the lining, I'm using a Chino Twill also from Blackbird Fabrics, but it's got a little bit of weight to it. So it won't be like super duper floppy, but it's also not so thick that it's going to be like difficult to sew with. So there's my twill for the lining. And then I'm also going to be using a sew-in interfacing also from Blackbird. Um, I just want to make sure that the bag is structured and isn't too like flopping all over the place. I want it to have like some sort of structure to it. So I'm just going to be attaching this interfacing um, to a lot of like the main body pieces and I'll show you along the way. But yeah, the interfacing is optional. You don't have to do it. In fact, I haven't used an interfacing yet with the Bestie bag. Um, I've made some like quilted versions of the Bestie bag. And so the quilt batting kind of acts as an extra structure. Um, but this time, since I have the corduroy and even though the corduroy is like thick-ish, I still feel like it's floppy enough that I want a little bit of added structure. So that's my fabrics. I have my main fabric, my lining, and my interfacing. Um, I have my zipper, my slider, my thread, my pins, all the things I need. So I am going to jump into cutting my fabric and attaching the interfacing to all the pieces that need it. And then we will pick up on step number one. Let's do a quick walkthrough of all the pattern pieces to make sure that we have everything cut correctly. So for the main body, we need two of the self fabric, two lining and two interfacing if you're doing interfacing. Then we have one small pocket cut from the lining and one large pocket cut from the lining. Next, we have two little baby zipper tabs cut from the main fabric, two strap tabs also cut from the main fabric and two from the interfacing. Then we have our left strap pieces, two main, two interfacing once again. And same thing with the bottom panel. And I'll also say about the bottom panel, watch how you cut it here because I would have preferred to probably have my corduroy stripes vertical, but just with the amount of fabric I have, I couldn't make that work. So if you're cutting directionally, keep an eye out for that. Next, we have the lining for our bottom panel, just one piece of that. And finally, we have our right strap, one main and one interfacing. And also with this strap, there are three different lengths that you can cut it to, small, medium, and large. With my measurements, I probably fall into the small category, but I wanted to just make sure I had a lot of extra wiggle room so I cut mine medium. Oh one last thing about the strap of the bag normally it comes to a point but I just prefer mine squared off so I did that instead. Okay the last bit of prep we're going to do before we start the construction of the bag is adding all the interfacing pieces onto their corresponding main fabrics. So this interfacing is a sew on interfacing so I'm just basting it to all of the pattern pieces and a basting stitch is like a quarter inch seam allowance at a really long stitch length. So my stitch length is five millimeters. That's like the largest one that my machine does. 
um, and I'm just going around all the edges and basting them onto the pattern piece. Now that all the interfacing is attached, we can go ahead and start our bag. First step is to make the pockets. So we are going to take the large lining pocket, flip it over so that the wrong side is facing up, and then we're gonna fold the top edge down half an inch and iron that all the way across. And then you're gonna fold it down another half inch and press again. Now that the top edge of your pocket is all pressed in place, we are ready to edge stitch it. And edge stitching is basically just a stitch that goes along the edge of the fold of your fabric. Just try to get as close as you can and it should look something like this. Now we're gonna tackle the small lining pocket. So take your pattern piece and fold it in half, right sides together so that the little notches that you cut out are kind of kissing. And then we're gonna sew up each of the side seams with half an inch seam allowance. I also make sure to do a good amount of back stitching at the end of that stitch there because that's where I'm gonna poke my corners out and I wanna make sure that stitch holds. Once your side seams are sewn up, you are going to cut little slices out of your top corners and try to get pretty close to the seam, obviously without actually cutting into your seam. This just helps reduce bulk when you turn it inside out. Now go ahead and turn your pocket inside out and I like to use something sort of pointy, but not too pointy to really poke those corners and get them to good points. Now we're going to press your side seams flat and I take my fingers and kind of like rub back and forth a little bit to make sure that the seam is coming to the outer edge of that fold. Once both of those side seams are pressed, then you're going to go ahead and make a stitch with a half inch seam allowance along the top edge of your pocket and make sure to do some good back stitches at the beginning and the end. Before we attach the pockets, we are going to stay stitch that curved top edge of the bag because as you can see, it does stretch a little bit and that's normal with woven fabrics like this to have a little bit of stretch on a curve. And so we're going to stay stitch at a 3 8 inch seam allowance just to make sure that as we're doing the construction of the bag, there's no stretching happening. Okay, now we are ready to attach the pocket. So we're gonna start with the large pocket. Um, find the notch that you cut in the bottom center of the pocket and match it up with the same notch that you cut in the center bottom of the lining piece. You also should have cut notches about halfway up the curve. So find those, match them up, pin everything in place, and then we are going to take a measuring tool. I have a straight edge, you can use a tape measure as well, and find the halfway point in this pocket. Make a little mark there and then connect the mark you just made to the center bottom notch that you had cut in the lining and in the pocket. I used a washable crayon that will just kind of rub out and marked a few little dashes along this line because we are going to sew along here to kind of make a divider for the pocket so there will be two separate pockets. To attach the pocket to the lining, we're first going to sew around the bottom edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And the reason why it's not a half an inch is because we want this seam hidden once we construct the entire lining of the bag. Then we're going to sew along that straight center line that you marked and make sure you backstitch quite a bit at the top of the pocket so that that stays really secure. I'm just going to rub those markings out a little bit so they start to fade and then we will have a finished side of our lining with the large pocket. Now we're going to tackle the small pocket which goes on the other side of the lining. So find that bottom notch again and line it up with the bottom notch of your lining. Pin that all in place and then we are going to once again sew along the bottom edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we are going to sew up the two sides of the pocket along the edge, so another edge stitch. Once again, make sure you're back stitching really well at the corners of that pocket. And there you have your second side of your lining with a small pocket. Okay, on to the zipper, which can be slightly tricky, but is mostly fun and rewarding, I promise. So you're gonna take your two zipper tabs, fold them in half, wrong sides touching, and press them in place. We're going to pin those tabs to the ends of the zipper with the fold facing in toward the zipper. That can be a little bit tricky because the ends of the zipper are separated, so they're going to want to kind of pull apart. And so when you pin it, you wanna make sure that you're pinning that separated end of the zipper nice and straight so that it doesn't pull apart as you're stitching. Now for the other end with the zipper pull, that one gets a little bit trickier because the zipper needs to be pulled down a little bit so that it's out of the way. And that makes it so that the ends are obviously much more separated, compounded with the fact that the pull is really pushing those two ends apart. So for this side, I'm kind of gonna pin them separately. Um, but the tab will kind of hold them together like railroad tracks, if that makes sense. Once everything's pinned in place, I'm just gonna measure the entire length of the zipper before I stitch the tabs on, just to make sure that with the zipper tabs included, the length is exactly what it should be. The instructions state it should be 17 and a quarter at this point, and we are perfect. Now we can go ahead and top stitch those zipper tabs to the zipper, 
Um, go slow, pull out the pins one by one, make sure that these separated ends are still running parallel to each other. And again, on the end with the zipper pull, you're gonna need to slide that out of the way to finish this side and go extra slow on this side to make sure that those ends don't pull apart. That being said, the ends of the zipper shouldn't actually be like flush together. They should look something like this, just barely enough apart that the zipper will be able to pull up seamlessly. Okay, beautiful. In order to attach the zipper to the main body of the bag, we need to find the center first. So fold your zipper in half and make teeny tiny snips in both sides of the center of the zipper. Make sure they're very small. You want to be able to just barely see them without it cutting too deep into the zipper. Then you're going to flip your zipper over so the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the bag and find those center notches, the center notch both on the zipper and the center notch on the bag. Line those up, pin it in place, and then I pin the ends of the zipper to the ends of the bag as well and then kind of line everything else up in between. You may notice as you're pinning that the pull of the zipper is kind of bulky and it gets in the way. Just pin it as best you can for now and then as we sew, we will handle that situation. So don't worry about it yet. To sew your zipper in place, it will help immensely if you have a zipper foot. Most machines come with the zipper foot, uh, especially modern ones, so you probably have one. So just swap out your regular foot and put in the zipper foot. Um, and we're going to attach it on the left side. There's two different sides depending on what side you're sewing your zipper on. Our zipper will be on the left, so attach it on the left. Your seam allowance here is going to vary a little bit just depending on how wide your zipper tape is. I stuck around 3 8 of an inch. Um, just try to get as close as you can to the zipper without getting too close because if you're right, right, right up next to it, then your zipper pull won't be able to glide. Now when you're coming up to the other end, your zipper pull is in the way. You can't go through it. You can't really go around it. So what you're going to do is you're going to get pretty up close to it and then stop move your fabric out of the way, lift your needle up, and then you're gonna pull the zipper pull <laughs> down past where you've already sewn, and then go back to your spot, go a few stitches back, back stitch a little bit, and then continue your stitch back through all the way to the end. And when you're done, you can slide your zipper pull back in place and see what a neat, beautiful line you've stitched. Now we are going to add one side of our lining to this zipper sandwich. So grab one of your lining pieces, flip it so that it's face down, right sides to the right side of the main body of the bag, but to the wrong side of the zipper. Find the center notch, match that up with the other center notches, pin that in place, and then we're actually gonna flip it around so that we can follow our original stitch line. And once again, after pinning the center, I'm going to pin the ends and then kind of line everything up in between those points. Now that we're coming at it from another side, the zipper pull is going to be in the way right off the bat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that the zipper pull out of the way. I would slide it down at least a couple inches. You can see it here in between this sandwich we have going on. Slide it down out of the way and then pin the zipper tape in place. Even though you can't see the zipper pull, you'll definitely be able to feel it. It's very bulky, so you'll be able to tell when you're coming up to it. And just like last time, when you do come up to the zipper pull, you're going to move your needle up, move your presser foot up, take that zipper pull, slide it back up out of the way, and continue where you left off or a few stitches back, back stitching, making sure that there's not gonna be any gaps left in your stitch. Keep going along the top of the bag, continuing right on top of that original stitch from last step. And look at that, now you have one side complete and it's looking so cute, it's starting to look like a bag. Um, now we're gonna go in with some top stitching and I realized that I want the bobbin thread to be black to match the lining, so I'm just gonna swap out my bobbin thread real quick to black. Now to edge stitch along the length of this seam, I'm going to keep my zipper foot in. I feel like it helps get really nice and close to that edge. Um, and I opted not to press my fabric, so I am with my left hand um, kind of pulling the main fabric and the lining fabric taut um, so that the edge is a nice crisp fold. Now this time when you come up to the zipper pull again, it's a little bit of a different situation because since this top stitching is visible, I didn't want to pick my needle up. So I did pick my presser foot up and for my machine, there's like a neutral presser foot position and then you can lift it even higher. I lifted it up all the way, slid the pull out um, little by little. It was a little bit wonky, but I got it out of the way and then I could lower my presser foot again and continue my stitch without that zipper pull in the way. I'm super happy with how clean it's looking, and now we just need to continue those same steps to do the other side of the zipper. 
Once you've done your other side, it should look something like this. You just got through one of the trickiest parts, so give yourself a pat on the back. It's looking so good, starting to look like a bag, um, and we're just gonna keep chugging ahead. Next up is attaching the bottom panel piece of the lining. But before we do that, we are going to pre-press the seam allowance for the gap that we're going to leave. So you can see the two notches on the side. I'm just gonna press up a half an inch from one notch all the way over to the other notch. Now we're going to pin that bottom panel piece onto the rest of the lining of your bag. So we're gonna start on the lining side with the two separated pockets, and you're going to find the center notch on the bottom of your lining and the center notch on the panel piece. Line those up, pin them in place, and then again, I like to pin like a few key points before I pin all the way across. So I'm gonna pin the ends together, and then there's also those notches we cut about halfway up through the curve. So once you have those key points pinned, then I'm going to go around and pin the rest of the curve, although you will leave a gap between the two side notches. And it does seem like a pretty big gap, but just trust the process, you're gonna need it later. Now we're going to sew along this curved edge that we pinned, but just to double check, we are only sewing through the lining. The main body of the bag is tucked away off to the side. We're gonna make sure that we don't accidentally snag that while we're stitching here. So go ahead with a half inch seam allowance, and once you get to that notch that's halfway up the curve of the bag, you're going to backstitch a few times, lift up your presser foot and your needle, adjust, go all the way over to the other notch, leaving that big gap that we talked about, backstitch a little bit there, and then continue your line all the way through the end of the bag. Okay, beautiful, that is one side done. You can see the big gap that we left. Again, it does look pretty big, don't worry about it yet. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and flip your bag around and we're going to pin the other side. This time, same deal, just much simpler because we're going to stitch all the way from one end to the other, leaving no gap. Again, make sure the main fabric of the bag is tucked out of the way and stitch all the way along this edge with a half inch seam allowance. So now both sides of your lining are all sewn up. It looks a little bit silly right now, but trust the process, it'll look good very soon. Um, so you have one side completely sewn up, the other side with the big gap left open, and we do have that folded back seam allowance, which we'll get to near the end. Okay, now we are going to attach the strap tabs to both sides of the main body pieces. And because you're sewing through all of these layers, the lining, the main body, the strap tab, all that stuff, I find that it's like, a little bit tricky to navigate. So I like to do a basting stitch just along this end of the main body first so that I don't have to worry about that as I'm attaching the strap tabs. Not the hugest deal in the world, it's optional. I just find it helpful. Okay, now to attach the strap tab, find that center notch, line it up, put a pin in there, and then you're going to stitch along that edge with a half inch seam allowance. Now this raw edge is the only one in the whole bag that's going to be exposed, so we need to finish it somehow. And normally I use my serger to finish raw edges, but because I'm not using the serger on any other part of this bag, and I don't wanna go get it out, I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch. If you've never finished a raw edge with a zigzag stitch, you essentially just want one end of the zigzag to go barely off of the fabric so that the zigzag is kind of enclosing that raw edge. And I also lengthen my stitch width and length just a bit. Once you finish that edge, you're gonna go ahead and flip your strap tab over and we are going to top stitch right along the edge of that seam. Repeat all these steps on your other strap tab and you'll have both sides done. Now we're going to attach the bottom panel piece to your main fabric. So the process is very similar to how you attach the bottom of the lining. Find your center notch, pin it. And I find that it's a lot easier if you're going to sew with that bottom panel piece on the bottom and your main body of your bag on the top. That just kind of helps reduce any puckers. So go ahead and start pinning all along this edge, matching up any notches, and you'll see where the strap tab meets the main body. The lining is kind of in a weird wonky position. Um, it looks like it's gonna be in the way or get sewn over. Kind of just tuck it out of the way as best you can and we'll deal with it once we are sewing along this seam. Yes, I do use two billion pins at this stage. I find it really helpful along the curve to make sure everything is lined up well. And now we're gonna go in with a half inch seam allowance and stitch all the way across this edge. I did wanna give you a closer look at that tricky area with the lining though. So when you're coming up to it, you'll see that your needle is going to kind of run alongside the stitch from the lining, but it's not going to overlap it. Um, so you don't really need to worry about it too much. You kind of just tuck the lining out of the way a little bit, and you're basically just stitching over the seam allowance of your lining. So you don't need to worry about it being visible or noticeable. You won't be able to notice it at all. So kind of just continue on through your stitch and don't worry too much about it. 
As I sew along this edge, I'm really feeling under the bottom panel and making sure that right where my presser foot is and my needle is, is flat. Like both layers of the fabric are flat under there. It's obviously very difficult with these two curved layers to have it be flat all the way around all the time. But as long as everything right under your presser foot is flat and in place, that's all you really need to worry about. So kind of just keep feeling under um, as you go around the curve to make sure that that's the case. All right, now that you have one side done, you're going to do the exact same process on the other side. Um, I did remember at this stage though that I had forgotten to open my zipper earlier. You definitely wanna make sure that your zipper is open before you shut your main fabric completely. I've accidentally forgotten before and it's a beast, so make sure you do that. Okay, once you've sewn up both sides, you are going to reach inside this mega gap that you have left and you're going to turn your bag completely inside out. And depending on how thick your fabric is, it could be like a little bit bulky and tricky. Just keep working it, pushing it, kind of like throw it around, shake it around. Um, make sure you pull the tabs up on both sides and get everything turned the right way out. Now that it's starting to look like a bag, we are entering into what is, in my opinion, the trickiest part of the construction, but it's fine. We're going to do it together. So we are going to top stitch along this seam here, and we're going to start from the center and go up toward the strap tab. So what you need to do is mark where you're going to finish your stitch. So put a little pin where that strap tab meets the main body from the other side so that as you're stitching along, you'll kind of know where to stop. Okay, because we are going to be sewing basically through the gap of the bag, I'm going to remove this front piece of my machine that's handy when you're sewing through like sleeves or narrow spaces like this. So from the inside of the bag, we're going to be sewing that seam allowance down, top stitching that. So pull your bag onto the arm of your sewing machine through the gap. Um, I had to lift my presser foot up quite a bit to get all of those layers out and out of the way. Um, so basically your presser foot should be sitting only on top of the seam allowance of your main bag. Your lining should not be stitched over or in the mix at all. The lining should be pushed completely out of the way. Also make sure that your seam allowance is tucked toward the bottom panel of the bag. So in this case, it's tucked under to the left. Starting from the center of the bag, you're going to start top stitching along this seam all the way up toward your strap tab. I'm going to go quite slow through this top stitching and I haven't sped this up at all so you can really see how slowly I'm going, how meticulous I am about this. Basically, you just need to focus on what's directly under your presser foot. There's so many layers and things to manage and the farther up toward the strap tab you get, the more difficult it's going to be. So just focus on what's directly under your presser foot. Don't worry about all the bunching nearby. So as you're doing this process of kind of adjusting, making a few stitches, adjusting, making a few stitches, you're obviously going to be able to do less stitches at once, once you get closer up to those strap tabs. Um, so you may only be able to do like a couple at a time once you get near the end. Um, but keep an eye on those pins. That is basically your finish line, your stopping point. Once you do come up to the pin, take it out, back stitch a little bit in that place, and then you can remove your bag from the sewing machine and kind of admire your handiwork. This is what my top stitching looks like, and overall I'm really happy with it, especially with how bulky my fabric is. It gets a little bit wonky near the strap tab, but again, that area is just so tricky and not everything can be perfect, so I'm totally gonna let it slide. Now we are going to continue this line of top stitching starting from the center and going the other direction toward the other strap tab. So put your bag back onto your machine going the other way and continue the top stitching just like you did on the other side. In all you'll do this process four times so that you have two complete lines of top stitching on both sides of your bag and this is what it should look like when it's done um, coming right up to those strap tabs on all the sides. Now we are going to sew our straps together. So starting with the long right strap piece, we are going to fold the edges under wrong sides together half an inch. And then because I squared off the end of my strap instead of bringing it to a point, I'm gonna do it slightly differently. So I'm gonna fold that end down half an inch. And then instead of just leaving it like that, I'm actually gonna do mitered corners. So I'll do one corner to kind of show you the difference. 
So basically from the outside, it looks squared off like the other one does. But when you take a peek on the other side, you can see that I folded down sort of like a triangle and brought the ends in to meet it. And this is just a less bulky way to fold it so that when you're folding it in half, there is not a ton of fabric right in one spot. So I'll do that mitered corner on the other side as well. And then I'm going to fold it in half and press. So all sides of this long strap should be folded in half an inch, except for the end that is going to be connected to the bag. You can leave that edge not folded. I'm going to set that strap out of the way, and then we're going to do a similar thing to the small left strap, except for you don't need to fold down either of the ends. You just need to do the long sides. So fold those down half an inch, fold it in half, and press that all in place. Now we're going to top stitch along the edges of these straps. So I did mine right along the edge at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I wanted to get pretty dang close. So I did that to the small strap and the large strap. And then I went back in and did two more rows of top stitching about half an inch apart, just in the center of the straps. This is mainly for aesthetic purposes. I thought it looked nice and it also kind of reduces the bulk a little bit so that it pulls through the glider easier. Now we're going to slide that smaller left strap piece through the glider. So grab your glider, slide the strap through on both sides, um, pull it flush, and then we're going to do a basting stitch along the bottom edge. And I did mine at about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We want to make sure that we're putting this small left strap on the correct side. So find the end of your bag where the zipper pull is. That's where we're going to insert this strap and reach inside of your bag in the gap that you've left and pull that tab back down inside out through the gap. Then you're going to insert your strap up through the little tunnel you've created, push it up all the way inside of there. You'll have to pull it out through the other side. And I pull it out quite a bit and then adjust it by dragging it back down until it is flush with that raw edge. Once that's good to go, stitch it in place with a half inch seam allowance. And I go back and forth quite a few times right here just because I really wanna make sure my strap is not going to be pulled loose. Then clip your corners to reduce bulk, but don't get too close to the stitches and you're good to turn your strap back inside out. So pull it through, and then I like to take the end of my scissors closed, of course, and kind of poke those corners into better points. Since we're already over in this area, I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch now. So we're gonna top stitch a little four-sided shape here, starting with where we left off of our top stitching, but this time we're going through all the layers. Go ahead and top stitch around the edge here, and I did it pretty close to the edge, maybe about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and it can get a little bit bulky, especially depending on your fabric. So just go slow. There may be parts where you have to kind of manipulate your fabric a little bit, guide it a little bit more than you normally would, but just stick with it, back stitch in any spots you need to, and finish meeting up to the top stitching on the other side. This is what the top stitching should look like when it's all said and done and repeat that whole process of inserting the strap and top stitching on the other side with your long strap. Now that both straps are attached, we are going to slide the long strap through the glider, which not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous about the bulk going on here, but it worked out great. It went through perfectly. The only thing left to do is to seal up the gap in the lining of our bag. So you can see where we folded up the seam allowance on one side, and I decided at this stage it would really be helpful to fold up the seam allowance on the other side as well. So I went ahead and did that, folded it up half an inch, and pressed that in place. Once that was done, I then pinned the gap closed, first at those center notches, and then I pinned from the center out on both sides. There are a couple different ways that you can close this seam. You can either hand sew it closed with a slip stitch, also known as a ladder stitch, or you can top stitch it with your machine. The hand sewn method is just a little bit cleaner. It's kind of like an invisible stitch, um, and that's a great option. Usually I do choose to slip stitch things like this, but in this instance, I'm kind of in a hurry and top stitching is way faster and it still looks plenty beautiful. So we are going to go ahead and top stitch this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, pretty close to the edge. Guys, that was the last step and now your bag is done. All you have to do is punch the lining back into place. You might need to get a little bit aggressive with it to get it where it needs to be, but if you peek inside, you can see all your cute little pockets. This bag needs a little bit of a lint roll, which I'll definitely be doing, but it's all finished. Zip it up and I hope you feel super proud of yourself. As for my bag, I am super happy with how it turned out. I love the corduroy that I went with. I love the self-strap and the glider. Overall, 10 out of 10.